Thank you for joining us today for a conversation with one of our partners in the community, cardiologist Dr. Keith Newby. Today, we're here to talk about COVID-19 vaccination, including access to the vaccine, the confidence that we can have in its effectiveness, and what each of us needs to know to keep ourselves, our families, and our communities healthy and safe. So Dr. Newby, to begin, I know you've focused a great deal on the level of confidence that our community should have in COVID-19 vaccination. Can you share some of the common questions that you're hearing from patients? Well, the first question that I'm always asked every time a patient comes to the office and I walk in the room is, should I get the vaccine? And the answer is always a resounding yes. I tell people all the time that we have a safe and effective way of preventing COVID-19 and we should take it. Uh, we look at the um, death rates of COVID-19 versus anything that may be attributed to the vaccine and they don't even add up. So I tell people, yes, you should get it. So that's always the first question. Second question they always ask is uh, whether or not this vaccine was going to kill them. And I always get that all the time and I tell them, no, this is a very safe, has been proven in all the data and literature. So then they say, well, this came out too fast. And I always ask them, what define what too fast means. We're in the middle of a pandemic with thousands of people dying every day. How long do we want to take before we come up with something that's going to help people? So I said, look at FDA and the red tape that goes into creating a vaccine or any medicine that's going to come out. You got to go through the R&D, research and development. And that is the first thing you have to do. And, and that was done here. So I say I give them assurities that uh, you know, there's nothing was cut out there. The research was all done appropriately, but what was cut out was the red tape that actually happened. So those are always the first few questions I always get. And those are my answers back. That's great. And we know there's been a lot of misinformation out there. Can you tell us about some of the misperceptions and what everyone should really know about the vaccine? Well, I'm always very pointed and upfront. If you bring up something to me, I'm going to call you out if it's inaccurate information. This has been the age of disinformation, and I try my best to dispel those rumors. First thing people always bring up to me, especially in the African American community, is Tuskegee. And they'll say, well, I don't want to take it because of Tuskegee. And I, the first thing I always respond back with that is, well, tell me what happened at Tuskegee since you brought it up. 90% of people can never tell me what truly happened there. So I'm like, if you're going to reference that, then make sure you've done your homework and you understand exactly what your fear factor is. Tuskegee, to be clear, was a, an experiment done back in, you know, I think it was 1940s, um, where they took individuals who already had syphilis and were looking for long-term effects, so they were withholding treatment. I said, so here we have where they're trying to give you treatment. This is different, and there's no uh, difference in terms of who's getting the vaccine. Everybody's getting the same vaccine, and that's one thing I try to make sure everybody's clear about. So that's the first thing they always bring up is Tuskegee. Second thing they bring up is uh, they bring the microchip phenomenon, saying this is putting microchips in you and following whatever you're doing. And I tell people my response back to that is, well, why would they want to follow your every move? I said, somebody's got to monitor your microchip uh, and that takes a lot of effort and money. So tell me what's the goal and the gain of that. I said, secondly, you carry a cell phone, don't you? I said, if you're carrying a cell phone, they could track that every day. I said, so, you know, I dispel every rumor that comes up with some reality checks. So those are the two biggest ones or the two or three biggest ones I hear. And I always have a comeback for that. That's great. And I know that people of color are disproportionately affected by COVID-19. Can you talk about why access is so important for minority communities? Well, because of that, because of the death rate and the complication rates of COVID-19, especially in the African-American community, we have to be diligent to make sure we get people vaccinated. And why is that? We, we're not fully sure, but we do know um, just how people live, close contacts, uh, those all can impact transmission rates. So that's going to be key for us to get our people vaccinated because that's going to help prevent complications, prevent COVID-19 and prevent death. One of the things with this vaccine, I keep trying to emphasize to people, this thing is 100%, 100% effective in preventing hospitalization and death from COVID-19. Well, how many vaccinations have ever been shown to do that? So we have one that's been shown to do that and I think we should take advantage of it. So I tell them, 
This is why we have to make sure this community, above all else, gets the vaccine because we can impact your life in a positive way. Great. And can you share more about how you're partnering with Sentara just to provide more access to the vaccine and equity in how it's distributed? Well, one of the advantages I think I've had with my relationship with Sentara over the years, uh, my practice is, is in cardiology, so I'm not an infectious disease physician, but I'm a physician first, cardiologist second. So when this vaccine became apparent that it was going to be made available, I reached out to the Virginia Department of Health Governor's Office to have access. So once we were able to get access, the biggest thing, especially in the early time frames, was getting the actual vaccine distributed to this practice. And we were running into a problem periodically. I wasn't able to get it. So I had to reach out to Sentara and said, listen, you know, I have a vaccine clinic coming up and I don't have any vaccine. Can you help? And uh, Dr. Asher, Jordan Asher, who has been a good friend throughout all this, was so uh, giving and kind hearted to say, listen, I want to help you get your community taken care of. Tell me what you need and we will make it happen. And he has stuck to his every word on that. So I could not have asked for a better partner to help me get through this uh, process, especially trying to get where we had access. Now access has become more abundant and we're able to, I don't have to bug him anymore about getting it. But at every turn, I asked him for help. He was always there to help, every turn. So I could not ask for a better partner in all this. I know that what we've seen over the past year is communities really supporting and taking care of one another. And it certainly sounds like that's the case here. Um, what, what else would you want our community to know about how important this vaccine is and the difference that it can make to people? Well, just again, reemphasizing that you have um, now access to three potential vaccines, uh, two of which had 94% effective in preventing disease, 100% effective in preventing death and hospitalizations. Uh, you know, the J&J &J one, of course, the effectiveness was not quite as high, but it was a different apples and oranges study. So that was looked at all variants, which the other ones did not do. So we're looking at a vaccine that we know, A, is safe, A, B, is effective, and C, is, is able to help prevent you from being hospitalized or dying from this uh, disease. So for, from my perspective, just the numbers alone are enough to say that this is something that people should get. Uh, all the fear factor that I hear, I tell people always stay away from social media on this. Go on the facts, not on what Facebook says or Instagram or Twitter, because again, you got to look at the healthcare professionals, people that have dealt with this and know what they're talking about. You have to make sure you have accurate information, not just information that somebody says they think happened for their cousin or whatever. And I think getting that accurate information from your doctors, from your uh, healthcare providers will help you make the best decision. And I know that many people have maybe said that they would wait on one vaccine versus another. Um, is there a difference between these vaccines and is there something that the community should know about that? Well, essentially, you know, you can't compare them in terms of effectiveness because they were studied slightly different. The, the Moderna and the Pfizer are straight messenger RNA versus J&J, &J, which is a vector vaccine. So they work a little different, but the actual uh, process, which is to create the spike protein that is part of the coronavirus molecule that your body is creating the immune response to, is what is similar in all three. Uh, so, you know, the one thing I tell people all the time when they ask me, well, which one do you have? I say, I have the one that works. You know, so all of them work. It doesn't matter which one you're getting. You get access to the first thing you have access to because what we know, how it can help you, is enough to me that should convince the person to take it and don't wait. You know, why wait? What you do is not going to just affect you, but those around you. And I tell people all the time, if you do not get it, think about the impact. If you develop this disease and you give it to a loved one and they go on to die, would you be okay with that? If you, if you say the answer is no, then you know what you need to do, which is get the vaccine to protect you and your loved ones. If your answer is yes, then I don't want to know who you are because if you feel that you're that selfish, I, I'm going to stay as far away from you as I can. So I tell people that it's a plain, honest statement. That what you do is not just about you. It's about who you're affecting. Great. And I know another question a lot of people have is, 
when you have side effects, what exactly is happening to your body? That is you crave the immune response. And everybody's different with that. I mean, when I had mine, to be honest with you, I had a little arm soreness the first day and that was really it. Even the second one, everybody had me all worried. I was gonna have to call out of work because I was gonna have all these problems. And to be honest with you, I didn't have any issues with the second one. My arm was a little sore for that one as well, but that was it. Everybody's a little different with that, but the one bottom line is you're not gonna get COVID-19 from the, from the injection. That is not gonna happen. But when you start developing any side effects, that's your body creating the immune response necessary. So when you are exposed to COVID-19, you're already ready to uh, fight the infection. Look at it like a, you're sparring, getting ready for a big fight. And your sparring partners fight like the main opponent you have, but you're getting ready for that fight. So that the vaccine is getting you ready for it. So when you get into the ring with the real fight, you're already prepared. You know how to combat the person or the entity and you'll be ready and to protect yourself. So really, I look at it as akin to that. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Newby, for sharing with us today. And thank all of you for joining today's conversation about access to COVID-19 vaccination. Even if you already plan to get the vaccine, we hope you're feeling even more confident about that decision now that you've heard from Dr. Newby. Remember, if you'd like to stay connected with us throughout the week, you can follow us right here on our Facebook page. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.